if more of the resources are allocated toward an immune response, then the chicken will not grow as effectively as it would if it doesn't need to allocate resources to the immune response. Mm -hmm. Next, all of the uh, alloantigens don't necessarily have to do with the immune response. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we talk about the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes or less. Uh, my name is Sam Rochel, and I'm Associate Professor of Poultry Nutrition at Auburn University and one of the co-hosts of the show. I'm very happy to be joined today by Dr. Bob Taylor from West Virginia University. Glad to be here. I guess we'll get get started talking about chicken alloantigens. Sure. Alloantigens are proteins that are expressed on cells. They are controlled by genes, and those genes have different forms called alleles. Mm -hmm. The different alleles appear in some, but not all, individuals of a species. Mm -hmm. The best example of an alloantigen that you and probably your listeners would be aware of is the ABO blood group system in humans. Right. So you can detect the alloantigens in chickens, originally detected by uh, antisera, and that's done by taking cells of one chicken and injecting them into a second chicken. Mm then that stimulates the production of antibody. And the antibody, through a series of procedures, can be made specific such that it reacts with only that alloantigen. There are 12-plus alloantigen systems in the chicken, and they have been described beginning about 1950 Mm. through the 1960s, we have known of their existence, but we have only recently begun to identify exactly what each of those alloantigens is. Mm. The next part of interest to your listeners will be the impact of of alloantigens on things related to nutrition. Sure. Let's go for a minute and and talk about resource allocation. Mm-hmm. So the resources for a chicken are primarily its feed, and that that feed is converted to energy, and that energy can be used in different ways. One of the major ways is growth and protein accretion. Another another way, however, is allocated to the immune system. If more of the resources are allocated toward an immune response, then the chicken will not grow as effectively as it would if it doesn't need to allocate resources to the immune response. Mm-hmm. Next, all of the uh, alloantigens don't necessarily have to do with the immune response. Mm. So the one that we think of most often is the B alloantigen, which is the major histocompatibility con- complex, a major controller of the immune response. But there are other systems which in some some of our work, we have shown that uh, feed, feed conversion uh, appears to be impacted by different alleles of the D, D as in dog, and E, E as in egg, alloantigen systems, so that 
there are some alleles which are more advantageous than are others. That's interesting. And so, you know, I guess um, to kind of take this a little bit uh, higher level too, even when we talk about these differences in responses, are you talking, is, is this impacting just uh, adaptive immunity or innate immunity also, which we, you know, traditionally kind of think of as being the most expensive from a nutrient resource standpoint. So are there any uh, effects on innate immunity as well? There are studies un underway. We don't quite know, but there's also some data that that speaks to mm. possible impacts of of the gut microbiome as may be in, impacted by uh, various alloantigens. Mm. But we still have a ways to go in understanding all, all of this. But, you know, over the last eight or 10 years, obviously the microbiome has become very, very important, both in human medicine and in animal medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know you've done a lot of your work over this through, you know, these divergently selective lines based on their responses. And, and that's helped identify and understand these. Uh, but even within each of those lines or within, you know, one specific genotype of, of broiler chicken, is there still a lot of variation, individual to individual variation, you think, um, that, you know, may impact maybe uh, the outcome or how susceptible to one disease or one environmental stressor or some type of insult in one flock at one farm versus another farm or, uh, you know, from another breeder flock? Well, let, let's think about this in, t in two different ways, Sam. The first one is that in lines that I used in one, one, one example are the high and low antibody lines mm -hmm. established by my colleague Paul Siegel at Virginia Tech. Sure. He has selected those birds for now 51 generations for a difference in their antibody response. Wow. That selection took place on a single trait, that is the antibody response. Okay. Yeah. At a specific time. Then you think about a commercial chicken. Mm -hmm. So you've got a farm growing 50,000 broilers in a, in a house. And those birds that are growing in that house are the product of parents and grandparents that have been selected for a laundry list of characteristics mm -hmm. rather than selected for one trait. Right. They're going to have some variation in many different genes, including the alloantigen. Mm -hmm. This may be an area of concentration in the future where we look at the different alloantigen alleles present in these broilers and see if they, they are uh, having an impact on growth, feed conversion, other traits of economic importance. Proven on the farm, trusted on the plate, let our technologies help make your production goals a reality. Learn from the experts how carbohydrates can improve nutrient utilization, gut health technologies differ by type, and how liquid smoke can light your bird performance on fire. Carry isn't just leading in animal agriculture, we're innovating it. Very good. Well, no, that's exciting. And I mean, I think this really adds, you know, I, I've always been interested in this uh, uh, nutrition by disease, nutrition by immune system activation interaction. And, you know, um, I think we're learning more uh, about how to at least kind of understand it and think about it a little bit. But certainly, you know, the, the mechanisms uh, responsible for these, uh, you know, different responses to nutrition under different disease states, we certainly don't know. And this seems to be one one piece of an important piece of the puzzle and understanding that better and, and really working towards precision feeding maybe once uh, we can get this sorted out a bit more. Right. Uh, well, thanks again, Dr. Taylor. That's really interesting information. I really appreciate you taking the time to share that, uh, all your work and, and your knowledge in this area. Thank you again for, for all you've done over your illustrious career in poultry science. Thanks for having me. I look forward to 
visiting with you at some future time. And thanks to all the listeners uh, for, again, joining us on this episode. And uh, please take the opportunity to like and subscribe on your favorite uh, platforms or leave us a review. And until then, I will see you uh, on the next one. Thank you. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry and nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.